Hello and welcome, IB Biology students. Today, I want to return to the topic of transport across the cell membrane, focusing on one specific component of that membrane, which is a little bit brushed over in the IB Biology Guide, the very important aquaporin, a transmembrane protein. As you can see here, I've got our a portion of the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane, which you should be very familiar with, to label all of the parts and to know the structure and function of each part. You should be quite familiar with the fact that this represents the phospholipid with the hydrophobic or water repelling tails and the hydrophilic or phosphate heads, which are attracted to water and hydrophilic in nature. You should be familiar that the water molecule in relation to other molecules that you have in biological systems, big molecules like glucose and protein molecules and starch molecules, water is a very small molecule and of course a polar molecule due to the existence of differences in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen. Electrons are shared unevenly in this water molecule, allowing it to have small positive and negative components. That gives rise to hydrogen bonding, of course, and then a range of important biological properties for the water molecule. How does water get across the cell membrane? Most biology students going back to sixth grade would be able to say that it's by the process of osmosis, the movement of water from an area of where you have more water molecules or a dilute solution or a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution with that process happening across a semi-permeable or a selectively permeable membrane, one that's only allowing the tiny water molecule to pass through but not allowing the larger solute molecules like sodium chloride or sucrose to pass through. And this here symbolizes the high amount of water going through the membrane and this uh, diffusion gradient with respect to water. So we can then say that osmosis is really a special kind of diffusion. Diffusion, of course, being the spreading movement of a gas or liquid from that area of high concentration to areas of lower concentration. So students usually familiar with all of this information and, of course, with this simple activity, this experiment, where you place red blood cells erythrocytes in distilled water, and water enters by osmosis, causing the cell to swell and to lyse or to burst open. That, of course, happens in animal cells. In plant cells, you would have a very turgid cell existing as a result of that intake of water. You might have done that in onion cells. But how does most of the water enter a cell? Does it enter through these little openings called aquaporins? Or does the polar water molecule have a way of getting through this hydrophobic region of the cell membrane? And the answer is both ways. Because the water molecule is so small, it was unclear about how the water actually got through, but the assumption was that the water molecule was small enough to get through the hydrophobic region of the cell membrane. But it was only in 1992, through the work of Johns Hopkins biologist Peter Agre, who later won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2003, that the transmembrane protein, the aquaporin, was brought to the attention of biologists. And since that time, more and more attention has been placed on these transmembrane proteins and why they are present in certain tissues and not in others. And could they possibly have a role to play in preventing disease and possibly even finding the cure to cancer? Could the aquaporin, which regulates the entry and exit of water, have a role to play in allowing plants to become more salt tolerant? And if plants can become more salt tolerant, so for you biology students learning about the aquaporin and having to do your independent investigation 
or your extended essay. If you visit the literature and you search the role of aquaporins in plant growth and development, or the role of aquaporins just in general, you will find lots and lots of recent research papers coming up about the aquaporin. Because bear in mind that this was only identified and discovered for the first time in 1992.